Hey guys, Jason Timothy here, musicsoftwaretraining.com. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to read the first chapter of my new book, The Process for Electronic Music Production. And uh, this is available on Amazon. This is certainly not an excerpt from Audible as my microphone setup in studio is not really quiet enough to give that sort of quality, but um, that should come in the next couple months from the time of this recording. If you're interested in either the ebook or the book, you can find it on Amazon. So with that, let's go ahead and get into this. Introduction. What I'm going to share within these pages is an approach to making music that dramatically transformed my music making, as well as thousands of my students over the years. It allowed me to 10x my productive output while also improving the quality of my music and maintaining my own unique voice. Let's face it, if you're an aspiring producer making electronic-based music, it can seem like an insurmountable task to get from nowhere to creating release quality songs consistently. Nothing I share here is an attempt to get you to copy my particular style of music. The goal is to make you better at sharing your own unique voice. This process should be relevant to you even if you change styles 10 times over the course of your music making journey. This book was written to give you the foundations and process of music production so you can focus on being creative without running up against roadblocks. If you always know where you are in the process, you'll almost never feel overwhelmed by the task of creating and finishing release quality music. If you're reading this book, then you probably feel that there are so many aspects of music production that it's hard to even know where to start. You've got to decide what kind of music you're making, pick a DAW or digital audio workstation, and then learn the software front to back. Then you need to figure out how to get the ideas and sounds you hear in your head into the computer. Let's not even get started on effects, instruments, controllers, music theory, song arrangement, mixing, and mastering. If this isn't enough, you get to learn how to promote yourself and build a fan base that actually wants to support you with their hard-earned money. I know this sounds like a pretty big mountain to climb, but trust me, you can do this and it doesn't have to be so complicated. Is there a lot to learn? Yes. Do you need to know everything to start making great songs? No, you don't. You just need to know enough to be dangerous. My goal is to get you there so you can create with confidence while you slowly pick up on some of the more subtle aspects of music production. The one thing that is most important for you to know is that everybody goes through the stage of not knowing. Everybody struggles to figure this stuff out. Sadly, many potentially great producers give up too soon and will never know what could have been. I want to compress what took me decades to learn into a matter of weeks. I've wanted to write this book for a number of years and I must admit that I almost didn't write this book at all. Putting into words the monumental task of producing music that you could be proud of is not an easy task. Even with 30 years of music making under my belt, there will always be new information, tools, and techniques that come along. This isn't by any means a definitive guide to everything you'll ever want to know about music making. That would be impossible. My hopes are that I'm able to offer a process that you can continue to implement, regardless of changes in tools and technology. I want this book to be as relevant in 25 years as it was when I wrote it. Although there will be some technical jargon, and you may hear some words you aren't currently familiar with, my goal is to break things down in simple English. I never liked user manuals much, and I don't want this book to read like one. I want this to feel more like a friend sitting down with you and having a normal conversation without talking over your head. This is how I've been teaching my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients for the last 20 years, and I found it much more personable and effective. I'm not that different than you, and I didn't have any natural gift to music making. I just happened to have tried a lot of things, failed a lot, and in the process, discovered what has worked well for me and those I've shared this with. I'm here to teach you what I understand from personal experience, nothing more. Einstein once said, genius is making complex ideas simple, not making simple ideas complex. He also said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you don't understand it yourself. This has been my philosophy with all the training and coaching I do. I don't want to add any extra confusion to such a broad subject. I want this book to inspire you in very actionable ways so you can move towards making your best work as painlessly as possible. I've created audio and video examples to better illustrate some of the concepts in this book. I encourage you to bookmark the page as an extra resource. Just a quick warning though, 
Don't be tempted to binge the content. You want a balance of learning one step at a time and implementing what you have learned before devouring more information. This ensures you're actually integrating what you're learning. I go really deep into this philosophy with my first book, The Mental Game of Electronic Music Production. With that out of the way, let's move on. Don't bring previous experiences to this process. I'm pretty confident that this is not the first thing you've picked up on your journey to creating release quality music. If you're like most aspiring producers, I'm sure you have scoured much of the internet searching high and low for solutions. You may have even invested in a course or coaching. Many students that find their way to me have been trying to gather as much information as possible to solve their current issues in hopes of getting better results. Unfortunately, as you may have noticed, information rarely creates transformation. If information led to your success, I imagine you would already be exactly where you would like to be with your music making. I'm going to assert that there's a missing element that 99% of music courses and coaches seem to gloss over or skip altogether. Music is often more mental than technical, so if you've struggled in the past with free or paid information, I'm going to ask that you set that aside as you go through this process. Let go of your need to control your process and allow yourself to be guided. Think of it like trying on a new coat. You can always take it off later or tailor things to your liking, but I urge you to allow me to guide you all the way through this process at least once. Once you start to see results, you can start inserting your own preferences, but for now, allow yourself to be guided. Clear your mind and let go of your fears. I'm gonna help you finish songs you can be proud of. My story. My music making journey in electronic music started in 1996. I had just finished playing guitar and doing drum and synth programming for my band. At the time, I didn't have a computer. I was using all hardware, so I didn't have a clue about anything computer related. Lucky for me, I had gotten a job at Guitar Center, a music shop, and it was a terrible job with one saving grace. Music software was pretty new and most programs were at version 1.0. The companies would give free software to employees in hopes we would learn it, love it, and sell more of it. I tried all the software available at the time, Cakewalk, Cubase, Studio Vision, and later Acid and Fruity Loops, now FL Studio. I wasn't great at creating my own electronic music at the time, but I was good enough to record and mix other bands. Over time, I became the go-to guy when anyone would have a technical issue. I was a pretty terrible salesperson, but I definitely saved a lot of sales for other employees who had sold software to their customers. Regardless, I didn't get paid for saving other people's sales. I got paid for my own sales numbers, which weren't great. I was, however, starting to build relationships with my customers because of my technical knowledge. I had a number of them pay me to get their studios set up, troubleshoot issues, and teach them the software they had purchased. I saw this as a way out of a dead-end job and in 1999, I quit. I got really good at teaching people to make music on their computers, and at the same time, I was getting better at making my own music. Although I went through some slim times, this kept me afloat without the need to get another nine to five job. I partnered up with a friend and we started to make music together. Our first track probably had 20 renditions and took 18 months. Yes, one and a half years. To our surprise, it actually caught the attention of some quite large DJs at the time and started getting really big plays. The problem is, we had no idea how we did what we did and got really uncomfortable with making new music. After a great run with two songs, we just seemed to run out of creative juice and confidence and had lost our opportunity to capitalize on our early success. Soon I was back to working on my own. This was a long road and there were a lot of failures that happened along the journey. It took about a decade of hard work to finally find my sound and my flow. I was trying to do everything on my own and my stubbornness cost me a lot of time that I'll never get back. I hope for you that the following pages will help you skip ahead of the many challenges I faced. I faced pretty much all of them and get you to a place of creative confidence. Regardless of your digital audio workstation of choice, the, the process I'm going to share should be completely doable for you. I'm not going to play favorites because honestly, the best DAW is the one you're most comfortable with and able to finish the most songs in. So get comfortable, strap in, and let's get to work. Step one, important daily habits. 
One thing I noticed while coaching my students was that many of my students were going on to greater success than I had, and although I was thrilled for them, it made me question why that was the case. I clearly had more knowledge and technical skill at the time. Wasn't that supposed to be the determining factor for success? This brought me to a very important epiphany. Perhaps there's more to music making than having all the information and technical skills. Maybe there was a missing element that, if I found it, I could get even better results with less need for the technical skill and a head full of information. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much information you have in your head. If you have poor habits, you're not going to put any of that to use, and thus, you won't get the results that you want. Defining your daily habits is of utmost importance to anyone trying to do something creative because you're going to run into a lot of mental challenges and it's your daily habits that are going to see you through. Not your technical skills, not the wealth of information that you have. It's going to come down to what you practice daily because when you practice something daily, it becomes second nature to you. It becomes automatic. You need these habits to be automatic in order to avoid overthinking. Changing habits can be very difficult. That's why it's so important to practice these every day and devote yourself to a process. I stole this quote from one of my favorite books on creativity called The War of Art. There's a secret that writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. It's the sitting down to write. I find this really true with music making. When you think about something in your head, you make it much more difficult for yourself than if you just went to the process of sitting down at your desk, turning on your software, and just getting to work. You'll be surprised how you can start off very unmotivated and just through the process of sitting down every day and being committed to a certain amount of time of the day, you'll find that things just start happening for you. I want you to believe this. I want you to trust this process and I want you to experience this for yourself. Even when you don't feel like doing something, even when you don't feel like doing the lesson that I laid out for you, it's very important that you just go through the process regardless. Start doing this for a few days in a row and you'll definitely see a difference in your motivation and in your ability to find the time that you didn't think you had. Your ability to sit down and focus without being distracted is going to make or break your success in this process. So you really wanna take this seriously. It's really important that you commit to this on a daily basis. It can bring you to the top 5% in your field pretty quickly. Think about it, just sitting down daily and doing your work, you can put yourself in the top 5 percentile of music producers. This is going to help you avoid being cast with all the other producers around. Most producers are not very productive. By just putting this practice into place, not only will you become more focused and productive, but your results are going to be better because you're practicing your skills every day. If you want to rise above 90% of music producers, this is a process that's going to get you there. Lack of commitment and resistance are the enemy of art and the artist. That is really your only enemy. It's not talent, it's not technical skills, it's resistance. If you resist sitting down to do your work, your work is never going to get done. You're also never going to have focus and you're never going to get better. Anyone who's successful has been able to fight resistance and fear. If you want to be great at what you do, then you need to recognize resistance in all aspects of your life, especially in your creative life. If you, could, if you could recognize this and put a stop to resistance and do the necessary things, even when you don't feel like it, you're going to find that you have less and less resistance. When you do feel resistance, it's going to be an automatic trigger for you to get to work instead of resisting. I really want you to consider that if you can beat resistance, everything else for you is going to fall into place. What you want to accomplish in the next 30 to 60 days has less to do with your technical or musical abilities and more to do with your level of focus on the right things in the right order. You can have all the answers out there. It's simply a matter of Googling. The problem is filling your head with a bunch of information without having a process. It's like reading a whole encyclopedia from A to Z and then expecting to retain the parts that are important to you at a specific moment. That's just not going to happen. It's much better to search for what you need when you need it, apply it immediately, add it to your toolbox, and then go as far as you can until you run into your next challenge. If you become a junkie for new information and try to convince yourself that that's part of the creative process, you're really going to do yourself a disservice. I urge you to not get ahead of yourself as I walk you through this process. Stay focused on what you're learning right now. By doing this, you're going to retain 
all the important information without filling your head with a bunch of BS that you simply don't need right now and might not ever need. It's really important to get this straight to be successful with your art. Music making is like cooking. There's certain fundamentals you must learn, but once you have that down, you're free to create your own recipes. That's what we're doing here. My goal is to show you the recipe for making music. Once you learn the recipe, you can start to add your own spices, your own techniques, things that work better for you and things that help define you as an artist. I'm not here to tell you that this approach is the only approach. I'm simply here to show you the recipe that has been proven to work for all the people I've shown it to. Once you have finished this process, you can evaluate what worked for you and what you might want to tweak later. But for right now, just focus on what I've laid out for you, all right? There's a myth that artists only work when they're inspired, and that is how great things happen. They're just hanging around doing nothing, and all of a sudden, some great inspiration comes in. They sit down, and they write a great song on the spot. The truth is, it doesn't work that way. Inspiration only comes to those who are willing to do the work when they are uninspired. Most of the time, you're just doing the work and going through the process. The thing that happens is, when you get yourself into the habit of working consistently, the inspiration follows. You'll find that you're able to create many more moments of inspiration than you've ever had sitting there and waiting for it to happen. Once you have experienced this for yourself, you'll understand it fully. I promise you that being uninspired and still working is what leads to inspiration. Information overload. Repeat after me. You don't need more stuff. You're fine with what you have. Less is truly more. If you want to finish music, the less tools that you have to choose from, the better you get at using the tools that you have. Your digital audio workstation of choice almost certainly has all the essentials built in. It might not give you all the things that you want, but it'll give you all that you need to start making great music. You might find there are certain tools that adapt better to your way of producing or to creating your type of sound, and that's fine. The thing is, you want to take the tools you currently have as far as they can go before you go searching for new things. It can be far too easy to become addicted to just making cool sounds and not necessarily learning your tools. Instead, you just end up knowing each of your hundred tools on a very surface level. This will take you to a point where you're spending most of your time searching through all your options instead of getting actual work done. Just rest assured that whatever you have right now is perfectly fine for you to make great music. I encourage you not to go hunting down any new toys during this process. After this process has been completed a couple times, you can search for specific tools that you think might be more efficient, but for now, we're gonna use what we have and make the most of them. You're going to find that you'll be much better able to focus on the music making process when you're not spending your time going through forums and reading arguments over what the best compressor or reverb is. There's never going to be one definitive answer. The best answer I can give you is use what you've got and learn it inside and out. I'm going to need 100% of your focus on this process. As you go forward, you'll find that you're able to use your tools better because you've actually learned what those tools do. I personally use most internal plugins. Probably 80% of what I use are the tools that come with my DAW, and I'm able to get really great results. Does that mean I don't have third-party plugins or synths? Of course not. I have a number of tools that I like to use that weren't bundled with my DAW. If you have some third-party tools or synths, that's great, as long as you currently know how to use them. I'm not going to be discussing third-party tools, but if you have them and you understand them, feel free to use them. If you've got a bunch of tools that are just sitting there that you've never dove into, I urge you not to dive into them. Now is not the time. I know I probably need to lighten up the mood here, but it's really important that I tell you this and really get it into your head, because understanding this is going to make the whole process much more fun, much more smooth, and much more satisfying in the end. I'm also certain that you'll get much more music done with this approach. Keep in mind which tools you need the most, instead of going down the rabbit hole of too many choices. Knowing the tools in your DAW is going to give you pretty much everything you need to get the job done. Keep this in mind. Making the wrong choice is the second worst thing you can do. The worst being to make no choice at all. You really can't make a wrong choice because you will always realize what does and doesn't work and then make another better choice. On the other hand, by sitting there wondering what the right choices are and not doing anything, you're not going to experience failure or success. You don't want to get stuck there. So make quick choices often and learn from every one of them. Don't be afraid of making the wrong choice and don't be afraid of failure. 
The ones who know so much now are the ones who made all the mistakes. When I heard this originally, I didn't really believe it. I thought, well, that sounds nice, but it can't be true. These guys are too successful. I made so many mistakes until I started becoming proficient at music making and realized that the only reason I'm more efficient now is because I screwed up so many times in the past. So don't be afraid to screw up. I say fail hard, fail fast, and pick yourself back up. It's the best way to get to the other side. The wrong choices you make now will lead to the right choices later. Sometimes making the wrong choice can actually have an accidental moment of magic within it. Those happy accidents can actually be some of the most clever things that you do in your music. So don't worry about it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn and you're going to move forward faster than 95% of other music producers. Ready, fire, aim. When you use the ready, aim, fire approach, you typically never get to fire. Instead, you kind of just ready yourself, aim, and you're just too nervous to pull the trigger. The ready, aim, fire approach is a faulty approach. It leads to analysis paralysis and will bring your productivity to a halt. It's much better to take the ready, fire, aim approach. Spend a small amount of time preparing and then take action. If you don't hit the target, that's fine. Just re-aim and fire again. That might seem counterintuitive to most of you, but I encourage you to try this on and see it for yourself. When I learned this, I realized how much time I had been wasting with the ready, aim, fire approach because I never pulled the trigger. This small shift will change a lot for you, so try it. Time management. During this process, I would expect you to be spending around one hour to 90 minutes of implementation per lesson. Let family and friends know that you need a specific amount of time each day to devote to your studies, preferably the same time each day. As you sit down to do your music production at the same time every day, your brain starts to know that at this time, it's time to get into that mode of thinking. There's certainly going to be times when you're not able to do this at the same time every day, and that's okay, but sticking to a schedule will get you better results. If you can pick a specific time without being distracted, it's going to be huge for you. It takes a lot more time to get back into the creative mode when you've been distracted. If you can just put all those distractions off for an hour to 90 minutes, you'll accomplish a lot more. Making time. For those of you who feel you don't have much time, that's understandable as well. You'll have to make extra time by reducing your email, social media time, and skipping some time in front of the TV as well. These are things you do every day that take up a lot of time and you don't even really think about it. By becoming more aware of that time and getting yourself to do less of those things, you're able to open up a lot of time for the music making that you didn't think you had. Batching. There are certain tasks that you're likely to do every day. With some of these tasks, you can instead do a week's worth of work in one day to free up the rest of the week. Maybe you shop two to three times a week, and maybe you can change that habit to shopping once a week, which can clear up a lot of time. Maybe it's setting a laundry day once a week instead of multiple times per week. Usually when you batch things, it ends up taking less time to do it all in one day than it does over several days. Maybe you only check your email once a day or once every couple days, depending on how important your emails are. Same with Facebook. Maybe you're checking it 10 to 15 times a day. Is it possible that you can check it once in the morning and once at night? Give this some thought and see what you can batch. Just ask the question, Am I able to knock all this out in one day so that it frees up the rest of my week? I bet you can find at least a couple things where this would apply to you. The extra hour. Consider that your least productive hour in the day is the last hour that you're awake. It's usually spent watching Netflix, surfing the net, or just spacing out. I suggest that you can turn that less productive hour into a more productive hour by waking up an hour earlier in the morning. By going to sleep an hour earlier and waking up an hour earlier in the morning, you just freed up an hour. This can even work by waking up before you have to go to a regular job. You may think that working at night is the most creative time for you, but I would urge you to consider working during the day. I've actually found that working during the day tends to be much more productive for me now, which I never would have expected. And I find it feels great to kick off your music making when it's still quiet and the stresses of life are still at bay. Your most important activities. Pick the three most important activities the night before to help you know exactly what to focus on. This is pretty important because if you can make yourself a small list of just three things that you need to get done the next day, you're going to be able to sleep on that and your brain is going to be able to digest that while you sleep. 
When you wake up, you'll be better focused on what you have to do the next day, and you'll tend to get a lot more music done. I think you'll be surprised when you have more motivation and focus than you normally do. The homework. Number one, write down what you would like to accomplish in the next 30 to 60 days. I think finishing two to three songs your first run through is totally doable. Knowing what you want to accomplish now is going to help your brain focus on exactly what needs to be done through the next month or two. So really get clear on what you want. If you've never finished a song you are happy with, just try for one song without the pressure to accomplish more. Find the pace that works for you. Remember, we're playing the long game here and you have decades of music making ahead of you. Two, figure out how you're planning to carve out the time needed for your daily practice. It's really important that you actually put this into writing. You don't wanna have this in your head. Get it written down on a notepad or something on the computer. Three, are you willing to go beyond the point that most people give up? Think about this. Chances are, if you don't give this some thought, you may very well fall into the trap that stalls most producers. You may feel tempted to stop or give up when you've reached a threshold that most other people wouldn't go past. That gives you the excuse to not push yourself as hard as you need to if you really want to put yourself in the top 5% of music producers. Do not skip this step, no matter how trivial it might seem now. Also, I highly recommend you not rush through the step to get to the next. Each step should be fully digested and implemented. I've found it's best to do no more than one step per day. If you need several days on any of these steps, that is fine. Once you fully internalize each step, you can start moving more quickly. Definitely take your time on your first run through though. So there you have it guys, that's the first chapter to the process for electronic music production. The path to finishing release quality songs consistently in any style. If you're interested in reading the book, you can find the links below. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic one and I hope you got something out of this first chapter. Take care and happy music making.